Hello, and welcome to The Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. My lesson today is on classifying real numbers. Our objectives today are that you will understand that all rational and irrational numbers are real numbers. You will also understand that an irrational number is a value that cannot be expressed as a fraction, and we will practice classifying real numbers as real, rational, integers, and whole. Our objectives today are what characteristics should you look for to classify a real number as irrational or rational. That's our goal today. Let's review some vocabulary. So real numbers are the set of numbers containing all rational and irrational numbers. The symbol R, it looks it usually has two lines to make the backs of the R here, represents all real numbers. So if you see this, that just means that it includes an infinite amount of numbers because the set of real numbers is not finite. It has an infinite amount of values in it. Then we have an irrational number, which is a number that cannot be written as a fraction or also expressed as a ratio of two integers. So remember, a fraction is a ratio, the numerator to denominator, a ratio of two integers. And really, irrational, the word, means no ratio. So ratio is inside of rational, and irrational means no ratio. So basically it means to you, you cannot write the value as a fraction. A rational number is a number that can be expressed as a fraction or a quotient of two integers, which could be a repeating decimal or terminating decimal. So in a previous video in this unit, I've shown you how to write any repeating decimal as a fraction so that you could prove that it is indeed a rational number. An integer is a whole number and the opposites. And don't forget zero is part of the integer family. So all our whole numbers are counting numbers and they're opposites and don't forget zero. Whole numbers are the positive integers and zero. All right, first let's talk about non-terminating and non-repeating decimals. A non-terminating and non-repeating decimal is not a rational number. It's what we call an irrational number. So decimals that do not have a repeating pattern and do not terminate are irrational numbers and not part of the rational number family. Now keep in mind, irrational numbers are still real numbers. Pi is the most famous or the most commonly uh, referred to irrational number. It does not terminate and it does not have a repeating pattern. Let's talk about square roots and cube roots and how they relate to the family of real numbers. So all perfect square roots and cube roots are rational numbers since they all can simplify to an integer. So again, in previous lessons, we practiced evaluating and simplifying square roots and cube roots and what makes a perfect cube root or perfect square root easy to evaluate. So if you can evaluate it, if it's perfect square or perfect cube, it makes it so that it is a whole number or an integer, making it a rational number. So here's our number line, and we made our number line, and here's our sum of our perfect squares, the one through seven. Remember, square root of one is one, square root of four is two, square root of nine is three, and so on. And then we have our perfect cubes, The uh, cube root of one is one, cube root of eight is two, cube root of 27 is three, and so on. Now, when we talk about, those are all rational and real, okay? And they all simplify to be an integer. Here are our integer values, one through seven, and that's equivalent to all of these values up above. So all of these square roots and cube roots that are shown here are real, rational, an integer, and a whole number. All the non-perfect square roots and cube roots are irrational numbers. So all those ones that fall in between our whole number or going the other way, our integer values, these are all irrational values because when you use a calculator to find them, as we learned when we learned how to approximate to the nearest hundredth in a previous video, these do not have a repeating pattern. So if you 
did square root of 2 or cube root of 2 on a calculator, there'd be a non-repeating, non-terminating decimal, making it an irrational value. And that is true for all the non-perfect squares and cubes between our integer values. Terminating and repeating decimals. A terminating decimal is a decimal that ends. 0 0.5 is an example. A repeating decimal is a decimal that has a repeating pattern. 0 0.333 and a dot 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 means it keeps on going, or you could write it as 0 0.3 with the repeating bar above it. I want you to note that both terminating and repeating decimals are rational numbers since they can be written as fractions. So if you have not seen the video on how to write a repeating decimal as a fraction, I hope you'll go back and do that. Don't forget, this can be written as a fraction. 0 0.5 is equivalent to 1 half, and 0 0.3 repeating is equivalent to 1 third. So they are rational because they can be expressed as fractions. Have you ever wondered about, this is just a little tidbit, what this repeating bar is called? It's called a vinculum. So it is Latin for chain, and in math, the horizontal line above a number represents a non-terminating repeating pattern. So this is a vinculum, or repeating bar, and it shows you that this 3 is going to repeat infinitely. Note that the repeating pattern could be more than one. So you could have 0 0.323232. It could have three digits or six digits that repeat. And this vinculum or the repeating bar would be above all the digits that repeat to show the pattern. So here we have a Venn diagram and all of these are real numbers. So anything that we put in our Venn diagram will be a real number. It's part of the real number family. So within the real number family, we know that all of these numbers are real numbers. So our first decision that we have to make, we have to identify whether it's gonna go into the rational numbers family or the irrational numbers family. So I'm gonna go through these and then you're gonna do a practice problem. So our first value is 0 0.3 repeating. So I know that all repeating decimals that have a pattern here that do not terminate can be written as fractions. So it's going to be a rational number. And I happen to know this one by heart, 0 0.3 repeating can be written as a fraction 1 third. Now let's look at the square root of eight. That is not a perfect square. So therefore it's irrational. Negative 4 over 2 simplifies to negative 2. So you must simplify if you can before you classify. So negative 2 is rational. It's also an integer. So we're going to put negative 4 halves in the integer category because the integers are also part of the rational numbers. So you remember how this Venn diagram goes is whole numbers are also integers and also rational numbers. Square root of 49 can be simplified. That is equal to 7. 7 is a whole number. It's also an integer, rational, and real. Negative 21 is an integer, a rational number, and a real number. So remember, integers are in the rational number square. It makes them both. So negative 21 is an integer, it's rational, and it's real. Let's look at zero. Zero is a whole number. It's an integer, rational number, and real. Two thirds is rational because it can be written as a fraction and it will be real. The cube root of 27 can be simplified to three, making it a whole number, an integer, a rational number, and a real number. 0 0.7 is rational because it can be written as the fraction 7 tenths. It's also a terminating decimal, making it rational. And then pi is an irrational number because pi is a non-terminating, non-repeating pattern of a decimal. So there you have it. Now let's just review this again. All of these irrational numbers are also real numbers. Notice this irrational set is within our real number set. Then from real numbers, we have rational numbers. 
all of these numbers here are rational. These are all rational and real. And then we go to these integers. These integers are integers, rational, and real. And our whole numbers are whole numbers, integers, rational numbers, and real. All right, now it's your turn. I would like you to pause the video and classify each of these five values and say every number set that they belong to. Go ahead and pause the video now and come back to check your work. Welcome back. So let's do the first one together. Negative square root of 36. This simplifies because the square root of 36 is 6. It's a perfect square. So it's negative 6. Negative 6 is real, rational, and an integer. Because it's negative, it's not a whole number. And remember, you're either picking irrational or rational. It can't be both. Two-sevenths is a fraction. Since it can be written as a fraction, we know that it is real and rational. 0 0.5 repeating. We know that it's got a repeating pattern to it. Actually, if you have watched that video that I talked about, we know that this can be written as the fraction 5 ninths. That is real and rational. The cube root of 3 is a non-perfect cube. It's real and irrational. 33 elevenths simplifies to 3. So therefore, it is real, rational, an integer, and whole because it's a positive value. Positive 3. So there you have it. Remember, all of these numbers were real. Only one of them ended up being irrational. But notice, once you decide whether it's irrational or rational, then you're either done if you say it's irrational, and once it's rational, you have to ask yourself, is it an integer and is it whole? So there you have it. That is how you classify real numbers as rational, irrational, integers, or whole numbers. I thank you for joining me today at The Magic of Math, where we continue to master math one video at a time. I hope you'll come back soon and have a great day.